Here's a secret. If you believe in fairy tales and that once you're married, it will be happily ever after, you will be disappointed. I do couples therapy and I've seen many frustrated couples. On average, couples wait too long for help with the average of being about six years. It's not uncommon to help couples within their first year. They come for a variety of reasons. Some are minor and others are much larger trials or traumas. In a previous video, I talked about warning signs of an unhealthy relationship. This video, I will talk about how to help you if your marriage is struggling. How does a relationship recover after a large trial? It often takes resilience and post-traumatic growth. Resilience is the ability to bounce back after a trial or trauma. Post-traumatic growth is moving to a higher level after the trial or trauma. Let's talk about how you can find more hope. If you were just meeting me for the first time, I'm Hugh Watt, founder of Trial Tappers. What's a trial tapper? People that find hope, resilience, and post-traumatic growth after life's trials and traumas. Our motto is, I tap pain, find a path, and grow stronger. I share tips with you after being married for more than 27 years. I've had the typical ups and downs like everybody else. But I've also helped many couples find post-traumatic growth after all sorts of trials and traumas in their marriages. The next secret is, I say, marriage is for the strong. Because successful marriages won't happen by accident, but by targeted, deliberate actions, which I call the three T's, the 80-20, and the five to one. Now we've all heard the statistics that 50% of marriages and 60% of second marriages will end in divorce. And I want to change that trend. Now let me talk about my three T's that I talk about in my books, Trial Tappers. Time, talk, and touch. The next tip you need to focus on is time. If you look at this chart, you'll see that I want you to get at least 20 minutes a day and you'll see that there's a lot of opportunities where there's missed time, whether it's playing videos, watching TV, the internet, or other hobbies. Evaluate the time that you spend with others. I just want you to get 20 minutes a day with your partner. So make sure to schedule time with your partner. It's important to schedule each week your complaints and your dates. When we talk about complaints, we want you to take the 15 to 30 rule. John Gottman teaches this concept that most people can only go about 15 minutes before the blood pressure starts raising too high and that after 15 minutes of a discussion about a complaint, you probably need to take a 30 minute break. The next secret is you need to focus on your talk. You need to remember the 80-20 rule and the five to one. So let me explain both. 80-20 is a concept that 80% of the things that I do, my wife really loves and 20% maybe not so much. Same thing with my wife, 80% that I love and 20% uh, we need to work on. The, the key is here that when we're dating, we focus on the 80%. We tell our friends about the 80% and we don't we kind of ignore the 20% of the things that we'll just figure out later. The reality is when most people come to couples therapy with me, what I hear is the 20% of all the problems. They don't talk about the 80% of the good things. I'm hearing all the 20% of the negative things. So I want you to realize that we each have our own 20% and it may not change, so you need to learn to adjust to both of you. Now, John Gottman talks about the rule of five to one, that in relationships, we need to work on this. So here's his quote. Marriages are much more likely to succeed when the couple experiences a five to one ratio of positive to negative interactions. Whereas when the ratio approaches one to one, marriages are more likely to end in divorce. John Gottman would say we need to focus on the positives five to one. And some of the talk rules that we often will tell couples is never to have these complaint sessions when you're tired or hungry. And try to put limits on the time, how long you argue, and the number of topics. Use those feeling words. Use reflective listening. Accept responsibility for what you've done. Use humor to repair and to avoid those criticism, excuses, contempt, 
sarcasm, mocking, you know, obviously verbal abuse, and what he also calls stonewalling or silence or using those absolute words like never or should. Um, you know, try to pre make sure you're watching your body language. You know, one rule for yourself might be to limit your intimate conversations with others and to avoid verbal abuse. Now remember, talk about feelings. Take turns talking, use that five to one, practice calming yourself when you're frustrated, and listen to understand. If you're finding value in this video, please hit that like button. Perhaps share it with someone else. Look, comment below. What's one tip you would give to someone that's considering marriage at this time? Now, back to the video. The next secret is that you need to focus on your touch. I recommend you try to get at least five touches a day. Now, how important is touch? Think about it when you were a teen. Just, you would accept any touch, you would be excited. If someone touched your toe, touched your elbow, touched your shoulder, those touches are valuable and we need to continue that in our relationships. I know you may have been raised differently. You may have not had hugs or kisses when you were growing up. So maybe that's running over into your relationships now. But I want to know how many touches are you getting in a day? Ann Landers put out to her readers this question. Would you be content to be held close and treated tenderly and forget about the act or sex? Yes or no? She had over 90,000 women in the U.S. respond and 72% said yes. How do you get five touches or 20 minutes a day? You really need to be creative. Now I'm talking about five non-sexual touches in a day. That could be riding in the car, holding hands on the couch, rubbing your feet, rubbing your shoulders, anything you can do to touch that is non-sexual. Now, obviously negative touch of hitting, kicking, choking, or forced intimacy needs to be ruled out. Don't forget there are many forms of intimacy besides physical. Consider the social, the spiritual, the intellectual, uh, working through crisis or common causes or hobbies or recreation or uh, creative arts or theater that you might go to might be another example. The next secret is I would like you to read these books. Why Marriages Succeed or Fail by John Gottman and The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. You deserve a good relationship. Here's my call to action. Speak up. Demand positive time with others. Schedule time with your partner. Use positive communication skills. Seek for healthy touch, at least five non-sexual touches a day. Focus on that five to one. Make sure you hit that 80% positives. Ask for help if you need help from a therapist or clergy or family or friends. And now I need to give you a warning. Don't expect too much change too fast. If you can look back on your trial and recognize one of these outcomes, you are stronger than you think, you can find helpful others, you can find a new appreciation for life or each other, you increase or connect more with the spiritual or existential power, or you discover new possibilities for your relationship, then you have found post-traumatic growth. Successful relationships are possible with targeted deliberate actions. Some people are stuck in a relationship that is so toxic that they feel like they are in a prison. And with no way out, it takes deliberate actions to break free from some of these relationships. I have four specific ways to help you out of your personal relationship if you're in a prison. I will explain my four freedom keys in my next video. So subscribe, get notified for those future videos when I post them. As a trial tapper, I tap pain, I find a path, and I grow stronger. Thanks for listening.